All right. I think we are live. How's it going, everybody? Let's get over to your comment section. All right. Hopefully, everybody's doing fantastically today. My name is Jesse. You are all on my Painting with Jesse page on Facebook and then on my Painting with Jesse page on YouTube. And today, we're going to be painting this cute little rabbit, little Easter bunny. Uh, we're going to be drawing it first, and then we're going to paint it. Okay, so we're going to be doing all this together. Probably going to going to take us about about an hour and fifteen minutes, approximately. Could take us an hour and a half. It just really depends on uh, on how quickly we get through it. You know, we take our time with this. I like to make sure that everybody's able to keep up and all that good stuff. So we're just going to wait a minute or two or three or four. Allow people to jump on here. I don't see any comments yet. If somebody there we go. What's happening? Zoo crazy. How are you? First person's comment to pop up. Could somebody please give me a sound check? Let me know that you can hear me okay. That would be fantastic and amazing. So if you guys could. What's happening, Becca? Happy early Easter to you. Absolutely happy Easter, everyone. Let's see. Abby Fu, Nessa B, how's it going, everyone? Okay, good. So I got somebody telling me that it sounds good. Fantastic, fantastic. So we're going to get started here pretty quickly. Just want to give everyone a couple minutes to get on. Um, I normally start about 10 minutes early, but uh, today I was prepping some stuff last minute. And, uh, you know, so we started. I started right before 10 o'clock. It's not quite 10 o'clock here, my time. So anyhow. Who's on with us today? What's happening? Maria T. Lazo from Houston. Thank you so much for the sound check. Shirley Lockwood says, can hear you just fine. Fantastic. Uh, in just a little bit, I'll, I'll talk about the supplies and everything that we're going to be needing to create our little bunny rabbit today. But don't stress too much. All you really need is a pencil and an eraser to do, do the drawing part of it. Maybe some of you are going to be doing it in chalk or something else. Uh, I do recommend that whatever it is you use to draw the bunny, we are going to be drawing first. It, make sure that it's something that you can erase, okay, in case you make any mistakes uh, or you want to change things. Uh, erasing is part of drawing, right? So I just want to make sure everybody's, everybody's aware of that. What's up? What's happening, Pamage? How are you from Florida? Paula Cooper, Newcastle, Indiana. And yeah, everyone, uh, just let me know if you guys could in the comment section. Drop me a little hello. Tell me where you're painting from, who's joining you today, that sort of thing. I like to know where people join in from. And for those of you that might be new to the page or channel, I am simultaneously live streaming to both Facebook and YouTube. Please let me know. Hey, Jesse, I'm new. First time. Now, I might not catch all the comments that come through, right? They come by pretty quickly, although I don't expect uh, we're going to have a huge group today. We are going to have a sizable group, and at some point, Sometimes the comments just fly by my screen and I don't get to see everyone, everyone's comments. So please, if I do miss your comment, don't think I'm ignoring you. It's just, you know, in the process of doing all this, uh, we're, uh, you know, it could be uh, sometimes I'll miss a comment or two. But anyway, Christy Galloway Yates from St. Louis, Missouri. How's it going? Guadalupe Garcia is back with us today. What's happening, Guadalupe? Um, let's see, Carrie and Cam in Texas. What's happening, Carrie and Cam in Texas? And then also, if anybody is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, uh, please put it in the comments. If you're whatever you're celebrating, let us know in the comments so we could, um, you know, wish you a happy birthday or happy anniversary or whatever it is. Maybe you just moved into a new house or something. Who knows? But put it down in the comments so we could uh, celebrate with you. Okay. Anita Erickson, what's happening from New York? Uh, really quick, before I forget, uh, this coming Monday, and I don't have the painting here with me. I have it at home. Uh, I got to do... A little video on that later, but I've got, oh, it is here. What am I talking about? It's right behind me. Next, on the 5th, this coming Monday, we're painting this together. Today, I'm going to be recording a pre-prep video that goes, uh, that teaches you how to draw the, the window and then the little flower box without the flowers. We'll be adding the paint and everything on Monday. The reason I'm doing this as a pre-prep video is because uh, it can take a really long time if we 
uh, if we do all this at the same, all in one sitting, it'll take us at least three hours to do this if we decide to do it all at one sitting. So I'm going to be doing a pre-prep video for this today. I'll be, re I'll be recording it. It won't be live. I'll be recording it, and then I'll be putting it up on the event page for this event. But we're going to be doing this on April 5th. I believe that's this coming Monday, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, the pre-prep video will just get you ready. Right? We'll get you, help you draw this so you have a little time to actually uh, draw this. You don't have to do this the day of. Just trying something a little different. But anyway, that's coming up. And then uh, I do have the umbrella painting. Where did I put it? I set it to the side earlier today. There it is. Give me one second while I grab it. This other event. Now, this one for sure, I'm not going to remember the date on. You'll have to look under the event tab on Painting with Jesse. We're doing this really cool uh, umbrella with roses theme. Now, the flowers, you can change them up however you want. I will be teaching you how to draw the, how to paint these roses. I'm going to be doing a pre-prep video, hopefully also this weekend, and I'll post it to the event page where it teaches you how to, how to paint this style of impressionistic rose. Okay, that way you're ready. You can practice before the day we, that we actually paint it. Again, I don't remember the date, but if you check it out under the event tab, you'll find that information there, but we will be having a pre-prep video on that. But awesome. All right, we are just about ready to go here. Layla RJ says, this is my first time painting live and I'm very excited to, to join the session. So very cool. All right, everybody. So. Let's get into our session today. What are we going to need? First thing you're going to be needing is something to draw with. I've got a basic number two pencil here. Okay, nothing fancy. It's got an eraser on it. You could use chalk, uh, watercolor pencils, etc. We're at, we are going to be drawing the bunny first. Okay, so whatever you've got, just make sure that you can erase with it. Okay, whatever you've got, as long as you can erase, uh, you're okay. Now. Unless some of you guys are really, really good at drawing and don't need any assistance with that, you know, then perfect. But, uh, but I would definitely suggest erasing as part of the drawing. So I suggest you have you something that you can erase with. Then, of course, I'm going to be painting with acrylic paints, uh, my favorite medium to use other than oil, acrylic paint. You paint with whatever you got, whether you got colored pencils, markers, uh, watercolors, crayons, whatever it is that you have, that's what you're going to be using. So... Don't worry too much about that, but we are going to be painting this together, like I said. And uh, I have a set of brushes. You don't need anything fancy. I do have my little kit here that I'll be using. I'll be pulling some uh, some brushes. We're not going to be using all of these brushes, but uh, I do have various brushes in here that I'll be using. They're going to be on the smaller side. You know, maybe I'll be using my uh, half inch flat brush here. Actually, that's a one inch. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go through the brushes here in a little bit. You're going to need a few small brushes to, to do this painting with. So just kind of be uh, aware of that. I'm sure most of you already have what you need. If you don't have any supplies and you're interested in, maybe you're just kind of stopping by, you're interested in finding out what you might need to join in on my sessions, send me a message on Painting with Jesse here on me the Messenger on Facebook uh, or even on uh, my Gmail, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. And I will send you <clears throat> links, suggestions to what you can buy. But all right, everyone, let's do this. Carmen Hernandez from Puerto Rico. What's happening, Carmen? Welcome all the way from Puerto Rico. Let's see who else. Becky Petrie and L Lizzie Rosario. What's happening, everyone? Let's get going here. We're going to start with the drawing part of this first. All right, let me change the screen here so that... Uh, you guys get a better view of what I'm going to be doing. Now, for those of you that are new, those of you that have been painting with me for a while, you already know how this works in between steps. So I outline a step over here. I show you a, a step or two, and then I give you a little time to implement it on your end. Okay. You can ask questions, put them in the comments section. In between steps, as I give you guys time to uh, implement the part that I just showed you, I answer your questions. I say hello and all that good stuff. Okay. But I'll let you know when you'll also see me in the, in the, you know, right. You'll see when I come over to my computer, when I'm looking at my laptop is when uh, you want to answer, you want to ask your questions. Okay. So, all right, here we go. Like I said, we're going to start with the drawing part of this first. Let me uh, blow this up a little bit. So we've got a nice little We've got a, a cute little bunny. Now, I don't know what you guys are all, what you're going to be 
painting this on. Maybe you're painting this on uh, paper. Some of you are going to have canvases. Some of you are going to have canvas boards. Whatever it is that you've got, and depending on the size, I'm using an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Same size as the original. Doesn't really matter too much. You can use an 8 by 10, a 16 by 20. It is entirely up to you what you use. You just have to change the size of your bunny to whatever custom size you'd like. Okay, it doesn't have to be the same proportions as this. As I always tell everybody when, whenever they come to uh, draw with me, everyone's or paint with me, everyone's piece will look a little different in the end. Okay, so don't stress too much about trying to make an exact version of what I've got. Anyway, on my little 11 by 14 inch canvas, I got my bunny right here. My bunny is probably about five inches, four or five inches high from the bottom edge of my canvas. So I just use my hand really quickly. And again, this is about four, about four inches, let's say, four and a half. But don't stress too much about it. I'm going to draw the top of my bunny's head. And at the beginning, I always draw really lightly. And then when I have the shape that I want, uh, then I go ahead and darken it in. Okay, so that's about, that's about the shape that I want from the top of my bunny's head. So I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Now I'm making it darker than I normally would because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. But I suggest all of you at home that are joining along, whether you're tracing this using that little traceable that I sent out via email or that I posted on the discussion board, use really light pencil lines so that you can easily erase. Or again, whatever it is that you're using to draw this, make sure they're really light. It makes it easier to, uh, to erase them. So here's the top of the bunny's head. That is this part right in here, okay? This little rounded top part of the head. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add the little, the little cheeks, okay? These little rounded cheeks on each side. I'm just gonna come out. I'm not worried about the fur just yet. Just making nice little rounded cheeks that go out on both sides, okay? Again, I'm not worried about all this little fur. We're just doing the outline. And if you guys notice, I'm just doing this very nice and loose. There isn't anything too fancy about this. We'll make corrections to this in a little bit, okay? But all right, take a moment on that. Let's see if we got any comments. Shweta Prabhu, what's happening? Ayush, what's happening, Ayush? Let's see, Deanna's 15th birthday. Happy birthday, Deanna, from Manitoba, Canada. Awesome. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Then Lavanda, England from Ohio. What's happening, Lavanda? All right. Very cool. Lots of people joining us today from all over the place. All right. Now, we do, now we're going to work on the little paws. If you notice the little paws, we're just all we're concentrating on is the outline. And these are basically, if you have the letter C, kind of flip it on its side like this. Go like this with your letter C, flip it down. That's pretty much what you've got. That's all you're really going to draw for now with the little paws. And the little paws come up from the bottom, they come over like this. And your paws can be big or they can be small, it doesn't really matter too much. Everybody's little bunny is going to look different, so don't stress. As long as it you know, kind of looks like mine, you're okay. But these are the little tops of the paws. The outlines of the paws, they go like that, come over, okay? So work on that for just a moment. Rosie, Evelyn, and Elena from London, Ontario. Welcome, everyone. Got a good little group right there. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got our little bunny. For those of you that are out that, are, that have the, the uh, stencil, if you're only doing the outline part of it, if you only did the outline part of it with your stencil or you're just out or you're just putting in the outline, obviously you're going to add all the stuff on the inside when I do it. I know some of you, when you, what you do is you'll take the stencil and use like carbon copy paper to get every single detail on, perfect, okay? Whatever way you did it, just kind of watch for the stuff that you're missing and add that in as we go. So now let's look at the little bunny ears, okay? These on top. I'm gonna start with this top part of that ear somewhere over here. I'm just gonna draw a nice little line that goes up, curves up. And your bunny ears can be long, they could be kind of short. Still a bunny and generally speaking, bunnies have long ears but they don't have to be super long. They don't have to be just like mine, like I've said. Simply uh, put some bunny ears in place 
and let's move on. Okay, so there's one other one over on the left side. This kind of comes up, curves back towards the edge of my canvas to a little point, and they should be about the same length, right? About, and then come on back. Right now, he's kind of looking like uh, like Piglet from uh, Winnie the Pooh. Looks a little bit like Piglet, I think. It turn it into an Easter piglet. Okay, all right. Now let's go ahead and do the inside of the ears. Basically the same shape as the outside, right? Both ears, nice and easy. Okay. And while you're at it, go ahead and erase any extra lines that you might have. Hopefully you're drawing yours nice and lightly so that it's easier to erase. Don't worry if you have smudges, too much because we're going to be covering most of this up with paint. Right out, down here where the ears are, where the ears touch the top of the head, I'm just going to go ahead and erase that line, the outline for the head. Okay, kind of like that. Right here on the top of the head, I'm going to give my little bunny some fur, sticks up, kind of does that. And then over here around the little cheeks, I'm just going to add some little, actually, I can do this. I can erase this. Now we're just adding some, uh, a little detail to the fur. Okay, so right here I'm just going to kind of come out like this, do some little lines that go into a point for the little fur. Okay. All right. Let me give you guys a little close up there. There's our little bunny. Okay. All right, let's look at the inside of the bunny. We got our little eyes, we got a nose, we got the little cheeks, the mouth, the tongue. We're gonna start with the eyes. And the eyes on my bunny, they're kind of oval, oval in shape. They're shaped kind of like an oval or even an egg. You can make yours round, you can make the, yours a little different, it's up to you if you have a different way of making eyes. But if you're gonna make them like mine, you're just drawing some little ovals. Okay, we're starting with the oval for each eye. You want to make sure you leave some space underneath for the nose and the mouth and everything else. Okay. And if you notice, I'm holding my pencil nice and loose towards the back. Okay, it's a re really relaxed way of drawing for me. My hand that I'm not drawing with, I put it on the table and I can use that to stabilize my drawing hand. Makes it a little easier. I mean, we could do this freehand like that, but stabilizing my hand a little bit helps me quite a bit. So there's the eyes. Now let's draw the inside, the dark part. Now your bunny's eyes could be a different color. They could be blue, green, brown, whatever color you want. Mine are probably, I'll probably stick to black. We'll see. But there we go. There's the inside of the eyes. We're not worried about the little dot, the little circle here in the middle. The white parts, we're not worried about that now, and we're not worried about these eyelashes. The eyelashes will come in later, okay? We'll do the eyelashes after uh, we've done some painting on the inside. Once you've done the eyes, let's look at the nose. The nose is basically, almost looks like a, like a gumdrop, upside down gumdrop or upside down triangle with rounded edges. Instead of having points, it's got little rounded edges. So let's go ahead and start with the top of our nose. Just gonna go like this, okay? Then we curve it down on each side, come down to a little kind of a point, okay? Look at that, cute little bunny coming together. Peggy Crowley, you got it, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Once we got the little nose in place, let's go ahead and do the little lines for the mouth. So we're gonna start with a little line down the middle of the nose. Don't go down too far. You wanna leave some space for your little tongue at the bottom. So as you start to come down, just take a look and gauge it that you're leaving enough space down there for the little tongue. But once you get down a little bit ways, curve it to the left, come up. Then you're gonna go over to the other side and do the same thing, nice and easy, okay? 
Now, some of you maybe don't want to give your little bunny a tongue. That's okay. Doesn't need a tongue. You can leave it like that, and that would be uh, perfect for this bunny. <clears throat> Excuse me. But for those of you that do want to give it a little tongue, then you want to do this. Basically, the letter U right at the bottom. Okay. So take a moment with that. Once you have your little tongue in place, for those of you that are going to be doing little cheeks, the little rounded circles for the cheeks, some here, we're over here above the paw, but close to the, uh, in between the nose and the paw. On the right. Little circle. Other side, same thing. Little circle for the rosy cheek. Well, mine's yellow. <clears throat> My little cheeks on the original are yellow. We'll see if we change it up. Okay. Hi, Mary. Hi, Michelle. What's happening, Kathleen? Then, also the, the little lines here at the bottom for the paw. We're not going to add those until later, these little lines in here, the uh, in between the little bunny's toes, okay? So when you've done this on your bunny, take a look at it. Take a little step back. Maybe look at it from a distance, okay? Kind of just to give an assessment, make sure you haven't missed anything. So again, take a little step back, look at your bunny and decide if your bunny is complete. <clears throat> In just a moment, we're going to go ahead and draw the outline for the two Easter eggs. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we get right into the painting of all of this, okay? So take a look at your bunny. Make little adjustments if you need to. Erase some of the smudges. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be painting most of it over those. So you're going to be locking, you're covering those up. But clean it up a little. Whoops, almost lost my pencil there. But let's take a look at those Easter eggs. Happy Easter, Ashley Alba. Yeah, somebody's asking, instead of t a tongue, can we do teeth? Absolutely. You could do a pair of little buck teeth. would look really cute. Absolutely. If you want to do teeth on your rabbit, absolutely. Yeah, and you can change the color that you want. Somebody says, I don't love the yellow cheeks. <laughs> That's all right. Use a color that you do love. Anything on here that you want to change up, please feel free to do so. You want to add some teeth, you want red cheeks instead of yellow, you want pink cheeks, or you want blue eyes or green eyes, you want different colored Easter eggs, this is your painting, I want you happy with it. So always, always, always when you come to draw or paint with me, you get to make whatever changes you'd like to your painting. It is yours, and it's you who has to be happy with it, okay? So yeah, always, whenever you want, make sure you you uh, get you can get creative with it, make your own little choices. But all right, let's look at the Easter eggs over here. Okay, two eggs. In my case, you may have one, you may have none, you may have three. All entirely up to you. But we're going to start with the one in the front, this one that's laying on its side, right here. And you guys all pretty much know that an Easter egg is kind of an oval shape, uh, or an egg, I should say. It's kind of an oval shape. So I'm going to start with this end over here, the blue, the blue egg. And again, you can change the Easter egg colors, right? Easter egg designs. You can decorate them however you want. So just going through here, <clears throat> drawing my sideways, sideways egg. Now, an egg is always a little thicker, <clears throat> whiter at the base. And this is the base at the bottom, a little whiter. And then it gets a little narrower over here. So as long as you've got a whiter base than you do the top, it's perfect, okay? That'll work. It'll look like an egg. Once you've done that egg, then you can do the one in the back behind it. And you only see part of it, right? Because the one, the blue one's in front. So this is the top of my red egg. goes up to a little point. Comes down. Tucks back under, and again, the bottom part of my egg is a little wider than the top. So just making little adjustments here, making it a little taller. 
There we go. I'll clean it up a little bit. There we go. There's our little egg. So take a moment with that. Karen Zilverberg Geditz from Easton in South Dakota. State Wrestling. Awesome, Karen. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being here. To all of you, whether you've been painting with me for a while or you're new to the, new to the page, welcome, welcome. And I believe we have, you know, few people both on Facebook and on YouTube. For those of you that don't, that don't know, I do live stream to both Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. Facebook, you cannot back up the live sessions. On YouTube, you can. This video will be available immediately after the live session's over on both platforms. So if you miss doing it today, want to catch it later this evening or tomorrow, you will, you will be able to do so on both my Painting with Jesse page here on Facebook and the Painting with Jesse channel on YouTube. Okay? But okay, let's talk about the paint because we are ready to do a little painting. Now, again, just like with the drawing part of it, whatever you want to change up on the piece, you can feel free to do so, right? Everyone gets to make their own choices with regards to how they want to paint um, their piece. So I don't want you guys stressing. <clears throat> I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of light blue for my background. I've got a little bit of blue on my plate here. Let me show you some of the colors that I'm going to be using today. So I've got this dark blue that I'm gonna, going to add some white to, to make it lighter. So we'll start with that. I've got a plate. I often use a plate as my palette. That's where I put my colors on. I also use plates to mix my paint on. So just taking some white and adding a little white there to my plate. So I got both colors there. Before I mix them to create the background, here are some of the other colors that I'll be using. I've got some green, okay? I've got some pink. I've got some yellow. And I don't know that I'll use all of these. Maybe I'll change things up as, as we go, but I've got some yellow. I've got some orange, okay? Uh, so those are primarily the colors that I'll be using and possibly mixing to create some of those background colors. Uh, but of course, uh, we're gonna start with that background. Now, brushes. I'm going to start with this. Actually, I'm going to, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I know you guys don't have one of these. It's okay. You can use a brush for this. I'm going to take one of my, uh, one of my palette knives here to mix my colors together. Just, uh, I know this, this is a little different to what some of you are uh, used to, but palette knives are excellent to mix colors. If you, don't have, if you don't have a palette knife, that's okay. Simply use a brush. You're going to take some white, a lot of white, if you're mixing the same color as I am. A lot of white, a little bit of blue. You mix those two together. Okay. So watch, this is what's cool about a palette knife. I can just grab a little bit at a time. When you use a brush to mix colors, a lot of the paint gets stuck to the brush. Okay, this is just a little bit more of an efficient way to mix colors. But again, if you've got a brush, use your brush. All good. Now, what we do want to do is we want to mix enough to cover the entire background. Okay, so you have to gauge it a little bit. It's better to have more it's better to have paint left over than to run out part way through. Okay, because if you run out part way through, then you've got to remix your paint. And that can be a little tricky sometimes to try to match the color that you've created. Okay, so again, better to have more than not enough. Not that it's super critical on this kind of painting, but you guys get what I'm saying. But all right, there's my mixture. I like it. I'm gonna take my palette knife. Now, I always have paper towels. Where did I put my paper towels? Right here in the front. I always have paper towels to clean things up. Okay, so I can do this easy cleanup on my palette knife, just like that. Cleaned, really simple. But for my actual, for the brush that I'll be using, this is a flat bright. You can use a flat brush, doesn't really matter too much, but one of these squared off heads. This is about a, a uh, three quarters of an inch brush, okay? 
Good for this, for painting backgrounds on a smaller, slightly smaller canvases. So I just load up my brush. Okay, load up my brush. For those of you um, that are newer to painting, you want to avoid getting any paint down inside here. This is called a ferrule. You want to avoid paint going down in there. Okay, if you get paint down inside that metal area, you can ruin your brushes, okay? So just be careful. So what I like to do, actually, I'm going to go ahead and outline my bunny first. I'll work my way all the way around like this, kind of quickly. Just got to be careful, right? Try to keep the paint on the outside of our bunny. Don't want any on the inside. Now, using I'm using the edge of my brush, the skinny edge of my brush, to make my line small, thin. I can come right up to my pencil line. By outlining first, makes it a lot easier when I start to paint my background. Okay, now here I'm gonna have I'm gonna have grass down there, right? That's okay. I'm still going to paint that area blue. So all the area around my eggs is going to be blue before we add grass. Okay, so again, so outline your eggs. Once you've got everything outlined, then you can go ahead and start filling in your background. You can do long uh, horizontal strokes like these, like what, the ones I'm doing here. Okay. You can do vertical ones, long like this, all the way across. Okay. Or you can do little short, choppy ones like this. All up to you. But whatever method you decide to use, you want to do it throughout your entire background. Okay. You don't want to switch it up. You don't want to do vertical here, horizontal there. Uh, Kind of cross hatch or random like what I'm doing now uh, in another area because that will you will you will be able to see that you'll see the difference and it won't look as clean. So that's just my suggestion. So I'm using this cross hatch pattern all the way throughout. Sometimes what you can do is you can take a little bit of water with your brush. If your paint is a little thick and it's not flowing very well, take a little bit of water, find an area in your paint like this where you can just mix that, blend that water in really easily with. By blending that water in, it makes it a lot easier to paint. Okay, it depends on what type of paint you're using, how thick it is. Just because you're using acrylic paint like I am doesn't, doesn't mean that it's, a, it's gonna have the same exact consistency. Depending on the type of acrylic paint. Um, some, some flows a little bit better, it's more liquidy. And then some is thicker. So the thicker paint, Sometimes you add water to it to make it easier to work with. And sometimes you don't. It just depends on what you're doing. And of course, you notice the two colors that I've got here for the background are different between the two paintings. That's all good. The original is more of a teal color. If I wanted to get more of a color like that, I'd add a little tiny bit of green to my paint. And that would give us a tealish color. Okay. There we go. Now, down in here around my ears, in between the ears. As soon as I'm done with this step, I'm going to give you guys a little time to um, to do it. Hopefully you're already you're already doing it. But you will have a little time to catch up. If any of you are falling behind, don't worry too much. If let's say when we're all done with today's session, you're not done with yours, it's okay. You're going to have that recorded session to go back to. On Facebook, you can find it on the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook. If you go to the live tab at the top, you'll see all of the previous videos that we've done all throughout last year and then what we've done so far this year. I think we've got about, we're at probably at about 90 videos now. So if you guys want to go check those out, see what else we've done here. If you're new to the page, that's where you go find them. A lot of really cool stuff. The main concern here when we're covering our background 
is that you don't have any stark white of the canvas coming through. Okay. Uh, first layers of paint are often, of acrylic paint, are often a little bit transparent. So depending on the type of paint you're using, the, um, again, it could be acrylic, but the type of acrylic paint that you're using is going to have a different consistency. Sometimes when you paint a background, you have to do more than one layer. In my case, one layer is going to be good enough. But for some of you, if you notice that your background is really uneven or, or there's a blotchiness to it, don't stress about it too much. Simply put down your paint layer like I am. Once it's dried, you can go back and do another layer over it, and that makes it nice and even and uh, brighter, sharper, cleaner, all that good stuff. All right. There we go. So take a couple minutes on yours to get to this point, maybe a minute and a half. I'm going to look at the comments here in just a moment. Don't forget to say hello. If you haven't yet, let me know where you're joining me from, where you're joining all of us from. If you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, etc., let me let all of us know. Now watch what I do here, folks, really quickly. I've got a nice brush here. The, the brush set that I'm using is a, Relatively decent set. Okay, it's from Conda. Uh, I often get this set. I haven't used it for a while, and I recently got this new set. What I do is I'll have two cup, two water. I have one water cup and a water tray. I'll show you in a second. I use my water cup to clean up the brush. Now, in the past, I've always had you guys look at when you guys were watching me. I leave my brushes in my water cup. Okay, in between steps with acrylic paint. You want to make sure that your paints do not dry out. Okay, to avoid doing that, to avoid your paints uh, from drying out, keep them from drying out, you want your paints, your water, your brushes sitting in a water cup. Again, to avoid your brushes to dry out on you with paint in them, which will ruin them, you want your brushes sitting in a water cup. What I do, now again, this is one of my nicer brushes. It's not super duper nice, but it's nice and I'd like to preserve it. So I'll, I'll use my water cup. I'll do this. Clean it up a little bit. And I might use my paper towel to just take off some of the excess. Now, this is by no means a clean brush yet. Okay, I'll talk about how to clean your brushes at the end. But what I'll do is I have this cookie bin. It's got water in it. I put my brush in like this. I lay it on its side. That protects the bristles when you leave when you leave a brush sitting in a water cup for a long for a long period of time, especially if you use a brush often and you do this with it, over time the bristles can start to bend. Okay, so to avoid that with nice brushes, to preserve your brushes, you wanna do something like this. When you're done with the brush, at least, even if you're not completely done with it, you might go back to it later, but you wanna let it sit in water on its side like that so that you take the weight off of those bristles. Okay, hope that made sense. But okay, you guys got about a minute. Carol Roy says, I went through your archive and found a lot of great paintings. Would there be any chance of you doing a tutorial on something similar to The Woman in Red? Ah, super popular. Lots of requests for The, the Woman in Red. You're are you talking about the, so there's two of them. Are you talking about the dancing couple or just the woman with her back, uh, with the back, her back kind of showing? Which one, which one are you uh, referring to, Carol? Again, the dancing couple or the woman that's just got her back? Kind of, she's got her, her head tilted. But yes, either one of those. I have had requests for both, and I do plan on doing a tutorial on that uh, at some point, probably before the end of spring. So, okay, cool. Yeah, super popular pieces that I did. Now, those are, those are done in oil. I did those, I want to say, about eight years ago now. Um, some of my favorite personal pieces. And... Um, I did those in oil, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to be doing a version of those in acrylic paint to teach as a class. So, okay. Elizabeth Trejo, what's happening from Victorville? All right, my neighbor, you are about an hour, about an hour and a half from where I am out here in California. So what's happening over in Victorville? Are You, you guys aren't hot yet, right? I'm, I know Victorville gets pretty hot, 
but I'm sure right now it's still really nice weather out there. Roblox, another request for Roblox. Absolutely, we will be doing some Roblox here pretty soon. Uh, we'll see. Send me, send me your uh, ideas. What do you want to see from Roblox? You can put it here in the comment section. Chris Held Ricard says, Happy Easter from Cavalier, North Dakota. Happy Easter to you. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Guadalupe says, My bunny looks very fat. Yeah, don't stress too much. Remember, bun your bunnies are going to be, everybody's bunny is going to look a little different. Uh, a little wide, a little skinny, tall, short, squat. It's all good. As long as it looks like a bunny, you're okay. Awesome, Debbie. Appreciate that. But yeah, Ella. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be doing uh, we'll be doing uh, uh, some Roblox soon. I get a lot of requests for Roblox. Uh, we did for those of you that are fans of uh, Among Us. We did an Among Us painting, and I got it over there. An Among Us painting, and I'll show you guys. Uh, maybe later on, I'll show you the Among Us painting. There is an Among Us tutorial. Rocket League, another good one. I like it. We'll see. We'll see. Lots of uh, lots of paintings coming out through the year. So I try to do at least one a month. Uh, sorry, one a week. Usually I get I'm able to get in two a week, and one's more of an adult theme or you know more uh, an old older more complex kind of crowd theme, and then I try to do at least one more child centric one like the one today. Okay, but all right, here we go. Let's continue with our bunny. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of pink, and I'm going to paint the pink parts of my bunny. Now, the order that I do this doesn't really matter too much. I could paint all the inside of my, of my bunny first. Ooh, my, uh, my, the cap on this bottle was glued pretty tightly. So just taking a little bit of pink, pouring it on my mix plate here. Sometimes a lot, I'm a lot more organized where I lay out all my paints that I'm going to be using all at the same time. Other times I'm, I paint a little more loosely. I take the paints out as I need them. But I'm going to take a filbert brush. I got a little filbert. Now the filbert brushes are known for having a rounded head at the top. They're thin, kind of like that. They're they're rectangular in, sh in general shape, but they have a rounded head at the top. These are good for painting on the inside of curved surfaces. They're good for making flowers. They're good for making uh, petals, leaves. They're good for a lot, a lot of things. But I'm going to use this to paint on the inside of my ears here. You know, dip it right into the pink. Again, you want to avoid getting any paint down in here. So just right down in the under, be, uh, under that metal part. So I'm just going to use the edge of my brush here. Just outlining my bunny ears first, the pink part. But yeah, folks, lots and lots and lots and lots of... Uh, Fun stuff coming this year. Stick around. If you haven't, please make sure you uh, follow the page, especially on YouTube, uh, which is, I'm, I'm barely really getting a little bit of steam over there. And that's for some reason a little harder to grow on. I don't post as much on YouTube, right? It's not like Facebook where you can post, well, I guess you could, but you can post pictures and video and uh, just. You can just post a comment, right? Whereas on YouTube, it's, you have to post a picture or video. It's just a little bit harder. Or maybe I'm just not as, as used to that platform. But anyway, growing on both, if you're on YouTube and you haven't liked the page, please do so. Hit the little notification bell so you get all the alerts when, I'm, when I post something new. And on Facebook, hit the follow. Okay, that's how you get to see every time I post something new. So all right, little bunny nose is pink on my bunny. So... Could be yours could be brown yours could even be black all of that will work now this paint that i'm using right now is pretty transparent okay i'm not too worried about that i simply put my layer of paint down and i move on maybe later i'll come back and do a second layer over that but what's also pink on my bunny the little tongue so let's get that some pink in there now i decided right now at this moment i decided i'm going to make my rosy cheeks red Okay, so I'm not going to, going to use pink on that. Now, if any of you are going to paint any of your uh, Easter eggs in pink, or the same pink as what we just used, what you're using at the moment, if you're using pink, then you want to go ahead and put a layer of pink on your Easter egg. Okay, right, this is, this is going to get some maybe polka dots, or who knows exactly how I'm going to decorate this egg. 
but I'm going to go ahead and put a little layer of pink down so I can come back and paint over the top of this later. And let me show you pink, lighter colors tend to be a little more transparent sometimes. Like in this case, my colors are a little blotchy. My paint layer is a little blotchy. I'm not too worried about that. Put your paint layer down and then let's move on. Okay. <clears throat> so take a moment on that. Annie Torres, nice weekend. I will watch, get a reunion with family. Can I save it? Yep. So again, everyone, uh, the video, the recorded session of this is as soon as this video is over, the video, uh, the recorded session, it is being recorded. So the recorded session is available both on Facebook and on YouTube immediately afterwards. You can join in later tonight, tomorrow. Maybe you need a fun activity to do on Easter. So you can come back and do this tomorrow. You can come back and do this Monday, Tuesday, whenever you want. Okay. But I do appreciate all of you that are joining in live today. It's always a lot more fun for me. And I've got a good group that I can interact with. But, uh, but yeah, you can come back and do this whenever you'd like. Roblox Noob says Debbie Wagner Daniels. <laughs> Let's see. Nancy Davidson, hi from Ohio. What's happening, De Nancy? Out in Ohio. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day out there with some pretty weather. But okay. I just took my brush to clean it up. I just swirled, swirled it around in my water cup here. I'm still going to use this brush for the next step. So, uh, you know what? What I, I'm going to do here, let's see. Yeah, I'll stick with this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some white. Now, this little bunny here, the original is an off-white. I mixed a touch of brown, a tiny, tiny touch of brown with some white to get this color in here. Now, I'm not going to do that for this one. I'm just going to use white for my bunny, but of course, Again, whatever color you'd like to use for your bunny, feel free to use that. If you want a brown bunny or you want a, a white bunny with spots or you want a cream color bunny, it is all entirely up to you. Let me know if you need any, if you have any questions as to what colors you can mix for whatever color bunny you're looking for. And I'll give you some tips on that. But a little bit of white. Again, I take my filbert brush. You can use, now if you don't have one of these little filbert brushes, and I should have mentioned this earlier, and you have a little square tip brush, a flat brush, kind of like, let's see here. Let me see one of my smaller flat brushes. I don't have any small, uh, too small of a flat brush in that grouping, so give me a second. So this is another flat brush right here, type of flat brush, okay? This is a golden taclon, refers to the synthetic bristle fibers that I meet that, that are in this. One of my favorite types of bristle brushes to use. Anyway, this is what you call a flat brush. You can use one of these too. Corners, right? It's got corners, and sometimes it's a little tricky to paint on the inside of curved surface or curved uh, objects. Uh, but you can use one of these too if you don't have one of these rounded filberts. Okay. If any of you are looking for for suggestions on supplies, send me a message on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook, or you can also send me a message on uh, by my email, Painting with Jesse at gmail.com and I'll send you suggestions, links, stuff to look at, to consider, look at reviews and things like that. Okay. If you don't know where to start, I can also send you information on paint and painting surfaces, all of that good stuff. So, all right, just taking my filbert, just grabbing white paint. I know my canvas is white. Somebody, somebody might ask, well, why are you painting white paint over a white canvas? It does make a difference. Okay, once you've painted everything, if you have an area of the canvas that isn't painted, it looks, it has more of a matte finish, a dull quality. So the paint, what the paint does is it gives it a little bit of a sheen. Even if you're painting with matte colored paint or matte finished paint, it still has a different reflective quality than, than a uh, plain canvas does. So just going through and adding some white, going around the cheeks. Okay, just being careful that I don't cover up my pencil lines. And if you do happen to cover up your pencil lines, it's okay. As long as, if I do this and I can still see my pencil line coming through there, I'm okay. Because I'm going to be outlining that in, uh, in a different color in a little bit. So around the eyes. Okay, once I've got a layer of paint all the way around my bunny, what I'll do is I'll use my brush 
and paint in the direction of the fur that I want the fur to go. So here, like on the sides of the where the whiskers are or where the cheeks are, I just kind of brush towards the edges. Here around the mouth, I can brush downwards. I do this gives it a little bit of, of dimension. Subtle, but, it, but your eyes can pick it up. Okay. Once I've painted white all on the inside here, I'm going to take my brush. I'm using the edge of the filbert brush. I come up to a point on the ear. Come down on the other side. Okay, same thing over here. Okay, there we go. So take a little bit on your bunny. I think I'm done using my filbert brush for now. Might use it for the other egg here in a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean it up in my water cup a little. Then I'm going to take it, just take off any extra paint and water just by squeezing it. Then I'm going to take it, again, because I want to preserve it, preserve its shape. I would just lay it down in my little bin here, sideways like that, and put it over here. A little extra step, but it goes a long way to, uh, goes a long way to uh, preserving our brushes. No, the umbrella, so the umbrella, let me see if I can look up the date on the umbrella without messing things up here. Give me one second. The umbrella will be, hold on one second. <clears throat> coming up, coming up. So the umbrella is going to be on Monday, April 12th, okay? So that is this right here. Now we're going to be doing this completely freehand. Often, usually I provide some, some form of stencil, but the umbrella part of it is not very difficult to do. Neither is the, the handle. I'll teach you, I'll be teaching all of this during our session, but I am going to be doing a tutorial on how to do your roses, this type of impressionistic rose uh, before the actual event. So that way you can get some practice in on the roses before we actually do the painting, okay? That, that tutorial will be done sometime. I'm hoping to do it by tomorrow. I can't make any promises because I've got a busy weekend, but it'll be up a few days before the actual uh, umbrella event so that, again, everybody gets a little bit of practice, okay? But all right, let's continue. Let's do this. Um, let's see, let me see. What else do we got? Ballerina. Yeah, ballerina would be pretty cool. Awesome, Dolores. Glad to hear. Dolores says, this is an amazing craft idea. This painting tutorial gave my children and me a chance to bond and spend quality time. Thank you. You got it, Dolores. Again, if you're not familiar with the page, go over uh, to the live tab at the end of the session. Go over to the live tab at the top of the Painting with Jesse page or even YouTube, and you'll find a whole bunch of videos that you can all come back and paint to later. Okay? But all right, here we go. Let's continue with our bunny. Now, my bunny's eyes are going to be, you know what? I'm going to make them blue. What the heck? Mostly because I don't have black at my reach. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me grab my black. Give me one second. Because I'm gonna I'm going to need black anyway. So might as well have it handy. And this uh, long old wire that you see me moving around with, it's my microphone. I'm going to get me a uh, a wireless version of this soon. But uh, this really really helps me. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice quality mic. So anyhow, got some black here. Now, actually, I'm going to go ahead and stick with my original plan and make a black. We, you can make your eyes blue. You can make them um, brown. You can make them green, whatever color you'd like. That's what we're going to go and do now. Just putting a little bit, of, little bit of black on my plate. Now, when you're going to paint a small surface like what we've got here, you want to use a small round brush. That's probably ideal for this or a small filbert, something small that's going to get you, uh, you know, you're going to be able to use on the inside of, the, of that small surface. I'm using what you call a round brush. This is a round brush. 
They're known. It's a rounded, rounded shape. If you look from the top down, they're, they go to a little point. These are really versatile brushes. Okay. I'm just going to grab some black from here. Okay. Notice I didn't spread it all, all over my entire uh, brush. Now, there are applications in which I would. I would bring up my paint way down here. In this case, I only need to paint at the top. So once I've got a little bit of paint, again, watch my hand. I place it on my table. I know not all of you are painting on easels. So this is, this is really a really good way to stabilize your hand when you are painting on an easel. I'm holding the brush kind of at the middle. It gives me a little, gives me good control. Okay. I could use just the point of the round brush to paint on the inside of the eye, or I can press down a little bit and give me a little bit of uh, thickness. On the, use the thickness of the brush to give me more coverage. But I'm using the point to just paint, to, you know, keep me inside my eye uh, by, because it's so tiny, the point being so tiny, I can easily come in and do a little bit of outlining, okay? That's one way to do this, okay? Now I'm going to demonstrate the same technique or similar technique with a smaller brush. Let's see here, okay? A little small filbert. Just cleaning up my brush here for a second. Swirling the uh, one I just used. I'm gonna grab that, put it into my bin on its side. But this is a filbert. It's just trying to demonstrate that you can use different brushes for certain for similar things. Again, just gonna grab some paint, some black paint, putting it at the top of my bristles. Because of the rounded shape of the top of this brush. Makes it easy to stay on the inside of my circle. You could also use a very small squared flat brush. That would work for this also. Okay. You could also use a pointy liner brush. Okay. Or, um, a pointy round brush, little detail brushes. Okay, there we go. So one thing I did forget, I'm going to be use one of my, let's see, what brush shall I use here? I'm going to use one of my small pointy brushes. Small round brush, smaller round brush right here. I'm going to take some white. I didn't put any of this white on the uh, whites of my little bunny's eyes. Let's add that now. Okay. You got it, Amy. Yeah, it takes a little longer to do it that way by, you know, providing details and tips. It takes a little longer. And I know sometimes some people are kind of like, Jesse, you're taking too long. But, but this is how people learn. This is how I'm able to provide information and detail that will help, especially for the newer painters. Somebody who's been painting for a little while might not appreciate it as much because they typically already know. But, you know, that's how we conduct the sessions here. Got, okay, I got one of my little round ones. This is probably, this is about a, a size four round, maybe a size three, okay? Uh, my brush, on my brush set, it just says small round. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to grab some paint, okay? I move it over to the side, and then I'll spin my brush, okay? Now, when you spin the brush, it makes the tip really small and easier to make small lines with. What I like to do is I'm taking my brush, I'm going to dip it in my water cup, Okay, I'm going to bring some of that water over and I'm going to mix it with my paint. When I do that, and I'll do that a couple times, it makes the paint easier to work with. Makes it, gives it a consistency more similar to ink. Okay. Oh, and there are, and there are ink acrylics or acrylic inks, ink types of paints. Anyhow, so there, now I can come in here and do by using just the very, very point of the bristles. I can 
through my outlines. Okay. Again, you do want to brush, you do want to um, spin your brushes. Okay. And then you're just going to go through. We already uh, painted the little paws in white. Okay, so we can do the little outline over the top. Water is your friend. Okay. Now, some of you will prefer to use um, the little really tiny, skinny, skinny brushes for these, and I'll show you some of those in a moment. There's a little, uh, little lines for the paw in between the toes. Actually, I only did two on that one. I just did three over here. One, two, three, four. I guess that works. If you want it like this one, only do two, okay? Okay, let's outline our eyes. Again, I'm using just the tip of the bristles. Okay. And then we got to give our bunny some eyelashes. One, two. Who knows? Maybe yours has three. Michelle says, you are taking too long. Sorry, Michelle. We got to take our time with this. We got to take our time with this. Can't rush it too much. But okay. So there's the eyes. Uh, we can go ahead and do the little, cheek, the little cheeks. And let's see. You know what? I'm going to do mine in, I think I said red earlier. Let's do, let's do purple. What the heck? Why not? Again, whatever color cheekbones you want to have on yours, <clears throat> that's the color you use. Everyone paints at a different paints, pace, folks. Again, some of you, and I've touched on this before, some of you are going to go faster. Some of you are going to go more slowly. I try to find a pace that kind of everyone or most people can keep up to. Even as relatively slowly as I've been going, there's some of you that, are falling, that have fallen behind. That's how it is. Don't stress too much about that. Do your best to keep up. And if you fall behind, I'm just going to touch up my tongue here. The little area that I was missing. Okay. Last thing on our rabbit is going to be I add a little bit of white, a little white part of the eyes. Just taking my little round brush, coming over. Again, these little round brushes are pretty versatile. Okay? And give me my little rabbit, the little white parts of the eyes. For now, I'm not using my round brush anymore. Just gonna clean it up a little. Goes back into my bin. You guys have about 30 seconds before we move on to the next step, and that's going to be adding in our grass. Okay? You got it, Elizabeth. All right, let's do some grass. So I've got a few different shades of grass blades in there. A couple of them. I've got some darker, a darker shade and a lighter shade. Now, if you've only got one color of green, you can lighten it up by adding a little bit of white to it or a little bit of yellow to it. But if you, if you only decide, if you decide you're only going to use one, one um, green color, you're good. 
If you want to vary it a little bit, then you're going to have a couple of different shades of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, let's see here, what did I do with my little set? Here we go. I'm going to use one of my angled brushes. See these little angled brushes? Don't worry if you don't have it. It has a little angled uh, head. It's flat. These are excellent for making grass blades. You can also use a filbert. You can also use a flat brush, a little square flat brush like this. Okay. So I'm going to start with my dark green, the darkest green that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to work my way around my Easter eggs. And I can start from the top and work down like this. Okay. Got to be careful when I go around my eggs. Okay, kind of like that. So I'm using this angled brush. Skinny part of the brush just creates really skinny lines. If I want them thicker, I just press down on the brush a little bit and the the lines get thicker. So I'm just applying a little tiny bit of pressure here. And your, your grass blades can all be about the same height. They can be a little bit different. But you want to add density and do that by Overlapping a little bit. Okay. I have grass on both sides of my bunny. Now, if you're using a flat brush, Here's how you want to do it. So again, I'm using an angled brush. It's easy to make these nice thin lines with, with this, but you can also use a flat brush. These little square headed flat brushes. As long as you can make the tip nice and flat, skinny, and you can do that by pressing the brush down into the paint like this into the plate. I'm using a plate, right? What that does is it compresses the bristles at the top. Now I can come in here and do this. Get a similar type of line. And I just keep doing it, doing that throughout. Now, before I start adding the different colors of, or the lighter shades of green in a bit, I'm going to let these dry for, for a little bit. Okay. I'm going to uh, add the little dandelions here in a moment for those of you that are adding those. These guys right here. Again, I can use the do do this using an angled brush, a little small angled angled brush. Here at the top, I go like this, curve it over, comes down. That's the, where the top of that dandelion dandelion's head is going to be. Got a leaf over here. Again, still using my angled brush. There's another leaf. Yeah, I'm going to have one on the left hand side, so let me go ahead and do the little line for that. Put a leaf. Now you guys have about two minutes to catch up. Clean up my brush. You got it, Danita. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Okay, so I clean up the brush a little bit. Now, these white bristle brushes are always going to get a tint. The colors that you end up using, that's okay. Not the end of the world when that happens. Okay, I take my brush, since I'm not using it, just putting it 
in my bin laying it on its side. Okay. All right. We are getting there. So I'm taking a look at the comments section. What's happening, everybody? You know what? Um, give me a second. I'm going to try to get a little warm with all my lights in my studio. So let me turn my air conditioner on. Give me one second. You know, I have to have, have to get a little airflow in here. I have all my studio lights in here. I've got one, two, three, four, four uh, studio lights, and then my lights in the ceiling, the lights behind me. It starts to get warm in here. My mic back on. All right, everyone. So take a moment on your grass blades and everything else. You got it, Patricia. My pleasure. Now, for those of you that um, would like to help support the page while you guys are finishing up the grass blades there, and again, we're only did, we only did one shade of the grass blade. In a bit, we're going to change it up a little bit by adding yellow or white and doing another layer of, so you can get a little more of a, more of a uh, look like on the original, okay? But anyway, for those of you that would like to help support the page, I do have a virtual tip jar, okay? And uh, this information I listed in the description of the video, I have a Zelle, I've got a Venmo, and I've got a PayPal, okay? Again, in the description of this video, this information is there for those of you who would like to help. Venmo is Jesse Mendeville at Painting with Jesse. They'll sometimes ask you for my email. It's at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. PayPal is paypal.me forward slash painting with Jesse. Now, painting with Jesse is all one word. Either one of those, Venmo or PayPal, you will see my picture at the top. And then I do use Zelle as well. 951-217-2237 is uh, my direct number. Again, for those of you that would like to help out with that, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Uh, another way to help support is by liking, following. Also, please send me pictures of your masterpieces when you're all done. And we're not done yet, obviously, but I just want to always request that you send me pictures of your stuff so that I can share them on my page, on my Facebook page. I like to do a batch share where I put all the pictures that people send me. And then uh, people have a lot of fun going through and looking to see what everybody created, right? The differences and things like that. So please be sure when you guys are all done, when you finish today or tomorrow or the next day, please send me a picture of your bunny rabbit. Preferably if you're holding it, that'd be fantastic. But if not, or like if you're in a group, take a picture of your group. Uh, you can send those to me on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook via Messenger or you can email those to me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, okay? But another way to help support the page is when you share your pictures on your social media, please tag my page. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. You can't tag YouTube so much, but YouTube uh, soon to be on TikTok as well, okay? All right, here we go. Let's continue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take a little tiny, now this is a liner brush, little tiny skinny pointy thing, okay? I'm going to use this to make the little lines for the dandelions. Okay, here we go. Just grabbing some paint. I'm dipping the brush in my paint. I spin it to make the, the tip nice and pointy. Then I'm going to come in here. And I just start brushing outwards like the spokes on a wheel all the way around. And you want to overlap, you want to layer over the top. And some can be a little thick, some can be skinny. Some can be a little longer than others. But you produce a dandelion effect by a lot of overlapping. You can start from the outside, work your way from the outside in, or you could do it from inside out or the middle out. Entirely up to you. If you don't have one of these little tiny pointy brushes and you have a very small flat brush, you can also, or a small angled brush, angular brush, as 
what the actual official name is, angular brush. You could um, flatten those in the paint and use just the tip of the bristles. You could kind of do that again with these kind of square um, brushes. All right, over here. Mine has two. Maybe yours has three. Maybe yours has none. If you're struggling with the paint, add a little bit of water to it. Dip your brush into your water cup. Then dip the brush into the water cup, bring it over. Grab some paint, blend the water and the paint together, spin your brush, come over to your, that right there helped quite a bit. This white paint that I'm using is, it flows really well, but it is still a little thick for these smaller lines, these small thin lines that I'm creating here, helps to add a little bit of water. Okay, so there's that dandelion. Let me come back to this one. There we go. So take a little bit on that. Awesome, Teresa. Oh yeah, Muse, uh, Muse Paint Bar, right? Is that what it's called? Muse Paint Bar, I believe. Yep, very cool. Well, thank you for hanging out and painting with us. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Patricia, my pleasure. Thank you. Okay, once you're all done with that dandelion, what you can do, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. Okay, a little bit of yellow. You can also do, the, do this with some white. I've got white here. But what I'll do, so now I'm going, earlier you saw me blend, you saw me mix Saw me mix with a uh, palette knife. Okay, I'm not going to do that this time. Just just to show you a difference for those of you that aren't familiar with this. Just going to take. Oops, I didn't I didn't put out any of my yellow. Okay, just going to grab a little bit of yellow, put it under my plate. Okay, I'm going to take this brush here, flat, larger brush, bring a little green over. Now I'm going to take some of this yellow, and mix the two together. I want to create a lighter version of this green that I used. Now, in this case, I could switch brushes. I can get one of the, that angular, angular brush that I was using to make my grass blades earlier, or I could use this br same brush that I'm using to mix this color. I just press it against the plate, making that edge nice and skinny. Now I come in here. Here we go. There we go, there we go. This contrast or this variation in this green now gives you some depth, gives your blast gr uh, grass blades. Blast grades is what I was going to say. <laughs> grass blades, some depth, some dimension. And you can do that with a few different shades. We're not, we're, I'm not going to today, but you could add a different shade of this green by even mixing in some darker color, a little bit of brown or blue even. You get a third shade still and further giving your grass more dimension. But it's not necessary on this. Over to the other side, same thing. Nice and easy. Do you have any friends that like to paint or you think would like to paint? Don't forget to share the channel with them. This channel has grown a lot from uh, word of mouth over the past year. Next month on the, I believe it's on the 22nd, April 22nd is when I did my first virtual painting session last year. So we're coming up on the uh, year anniversary. Might have to do something special for that. 
But there we go. Okay. Work on that for just a bit. I'm about to start coloring in the uh, Easter eggs in just a moment. All right, look at the comment section. While you guys are waiting for the next step, where's my? While you guys are waiting for the next step, I'm gonna going to talk about how to clean your brushes. If any of you that are kind of just waiting, if you're not if you're new to painting, you do not want to let acrylic paint dry on your brushes you if you're this applies to oil and a few other mediums also but acrylic paint tends to be very damaging to brushes if you allow that paint to dry so let's say for example that i had paint on this and i just left it on my table and even in a few minutes 30 minutes an hour or whatever i allow that paint to dry on my brush that brush can get ruined so you never want to let that happen always have your brushes in water in between steps but to clean these up, you can get a special type of cleaner made to clean up paint brushes, uh, condition them a bit, or you could use a little bit of soap and water. Okay, I just like to use dish soap, a little mild dish soap. I, for my nicer brushes, I'll use a, a special cleaner meant for, you know, getting acrylic brushes and stuff, conditions of the bristles and stuff. But once, uh, what I'll do is I'll just run these under, I'll get some soap and water, dish soap, clean them up in a dish. Right, just have soap and water in there. Just kind of swirl it around quite a bit. I run the br uh, put the brush under water. Let that uh, water wash out any extra paint. I'll dry it with a paper towel, gently, kind of like that. And then what I'll do is I'll reform the brush, the bristles. I'll I'll put them back into their original shape. Okay, at the end of my this is at the end of my paint sessions. Clean them up, straighten out the bristles, and then I store these in something like this where the brushes have no, I, I don't store them facing down with the weight of the handle on the bristles. I store them in something like this or a cup facing upwards. And uh, even on the side, they could be on the side, on their side, like this on a table, as long as there's no weight on the bristles. But you always wanna clean them up after every, after every, every uh, painting session, very important. But all right, let's look at those Easter eggs. Let's color those in. The, the last couple of things we're going to do, color in the Easter eggs. Finish up with those and then outline the bunny. I'm going to use a gray to outline the bunny. Okay, that is going to make it stand out. And then we are done, except for maybe signing it for those of you that are going to sign it. But all right, let's grab one of my filbert brushes. Filbert brush is one of my favorite brushes to paint with. Okay, again, the rounded edge is perfect for painting things like. Um, the Easter eggs, right? The rounded edge of the, or rounded outline of the Easter eggs. So just cleaning up this brush that I used earlier for the black. I'm going to use, I'm going to use, um, yeah, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make some purple. I'm going to take some, a little bit of blue. I'm going to take some pink, red, and blue make purple. Pink and blue will make a really light lavender. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use for this, for this egg. So right in here, do my outline first. All right. Now I'm going to take just pink and do a layer on my my first pink egg. It's going to make it more intense, more even toned, brighter.
Okay. Now, while that dries, I'm going to take my round pointy brush, my little liner, this little guy right here. I'm going to mix some gray, a little bit of black and a little bit of white. You can also do this in brown. A little bit of black, a little bit of white. Maybe a little bit of water. Take my brush, dip it into my water cup, bring it back over. Okay, spin my brush. Now this is a really old brush that I'm using. Nothing fancy here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to outline my bunny. This outlining makes it stand out against the background. Again, you could use you could use brown, you could use black. It depends on the color of your bunny. And not every single bit of the outline has to be, or the edge has to be outlined. But by outlining, it does stand out. against the background. Again, don't forget if some of you are just kind of watching, have never painted before, and maybe are interested in learning how to start, what supplies to get, send me, a, send me a message. I'll send you some links to stuff that I recommend. Good quality, um, but cost-effective starter, starter sets. And if you've been painting for a little while and want to upgrade, you want better quality stuff because it does make a difference, especially brushes. The better the brush, the easier it is to paint. If you're using beat up old brushes or really low quality brushes, you will struggle more. Okay. But anyway, if you're interested, let me know. Send me a message here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook or send me an email, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. But all right, there's my little outline. As I was working on the outline, my eggs were drying. Were drying. I'm just going to add another layer of this purple, this lavender to my purple egg. Now watch, on this second layer, what I can do is I can turn my brush strokes with the egg, uh, with the shape of the egg, so like this. Long. This helps give the egg a little bit of shape. Okay, and on the uh, on the other egg, on the pink one, I still have some white paint on there, so I just take my brush and do the same thing. Long, smooth brush strokes. There we go. Now you can decorate them however you want: stripes, polka dots, etc. Let's see, what am I going to use? I think I'm going to use some yellow polka dots on my pink egg and there's a couple of ways you can make dots with a thick brush one of the thicker brushes you can actually just grab the back of the handle something like this big thick brush you dip it right into the paint like this okay now you can come over and do this real easy way to make dots circles dots stars that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, something like that. If you if you wanted to make dots with a brush, you could use a little liner brush. You could use a little round brush. Um, let's see. We're gonna make some blue dots, dark blue dots on my other egg. So round brush, I just come in, 
apply a little pressure with the brush straight. And then I could use the tip to fix them. Or I could take just the tip and brush like this. Different brushes do different things, but you can, but different brushes can do the same thing. Similar things. Okay, there we go. Yep, you can always add a little bit of water, a little bit of uh, water to thicker paints. That is correct. Anytime you have really thick paint and you're not looking to use a thick paint, um, let's say you've got an application that requires nice, flowy, thin, thin layer of paint. If you've got a thick paint, you add a little bit of water to it, and that, and that thins out your paint. You're now able to, to create thinner layers of, of paint. Okay. Um, so oftentimes, if sometimes people will ask me, well, what should I get? Should I get a thick paint or should I get a thin paint? If you can't get both, I do. I like to have combinations. This, for example, is this the fine touch acrylic paint is a thicker body paint. If I do this to pour it out, it takes a long time for it to come out. I got to kind of shake the, the container so that paint starts to come out because it's pretty thick body paint. And then there's this other more flowy type from an artist loft. If I do this, that paint pours out. I can, right now as I'm doing this, it's flowing, you know, I can feel it flowing inside that bottle. So there's different uh, consistency types of paint. But yeah, if you've got a thick paint, you could easily make it thinner by adding a little bit of water to it, right? So probably for that reason, um, I would recommend a thick paint as opposed to a thinner, more flowy paint. So anyway, that is that. Um, okay, of course, Carol, my pleasure. Uh, do me a favor. Actually, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. And I'll, just in case I, I don't remember, and I'm pretty sure I will, but I've got a lot of, you know, a lot of things that kind of pop up in, a, in any moment, all of a sudden things get really busy. So, but if, if you don't see me respond to you later today, Carol, Please send me a message here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook, okay? But anyhow, that is the end of our session today for the most part. You can see the difference between my two rabbits, right? They're not exactly identical. It wasn't the point to try to make them exactly the same. I'm hoping that you guys, none of you were stressing about trying to make an exact replica of the original. Uh, part of the fun is creating something that's uniquely yours to change things up as you'd like. Right, uh, but the last thing I want is any of you stressing out about trying to replicate everything over here exactly. So uh, hopefully you all had some fun. The last thing that I always tell everyone is you want to sign your masterpiece. You want to let people know who created this piece, especially if you're planning on hanging it up somewhere. If you're happy with it and you want to, uh, you know, put it up somewhere, you want to use a skinny liner brush to do your your signing. Now you can sign it with your Middle name, your last name, um, your initials, your first name, your nickname, whatever you want to sign in. I like to sign my paintings with my last name. So I'm just grabbing some yellow paint here, and the color doesn't really matter too much. Often I'll use a color that I used in my painting, um, but I mostly I want, to, I want to contrast whatever area I'm going to be signing in. So here against my grass, I'm just taking... It's probably not a good choice because it's a little hard to see against the green grass, but you could always layer it. So I'm signing right up in here. Most artists will sign in a corner somewhere. Some people like to sign them on the back. They whatever, wherever you would like to sign. Whoops, I just dip my fingers right in my paint. That's all right. Sign wherever you'd like, but do sign your, your piece. And then uh, don't forget, please take pictures of your stuff. Send them over to me here on Painting with Jesse. On Facebook, if you're on YouTube, send them send them to me on uh, by by my email at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Okay, and then again, don't forget, please um, please tag the page when you when you post your pictures on your social media. It is greatly appreciated. 
Don't forget, for those of you who would like to support the page, uh, there is a virtual tip jar that I've put in the description of the video on PayPal and uh, Venmo under Painting with Jesse. You'll see my picture at the top. My phone number is just my, I'm sorry, my Zelle is just my phone number. Give me a second here. Let's see. Banners. Here we go. There's the information at the bottom of the of the video now. Uh, you should see that information at the bottom. But um, anyway, folks, I do want to thank you. I do also want to remind you that we've got a couple of really neat events coming here very soon. I'm going to be adding quite a few more to the calendar for April. I just haven't updated everything yet. Hopefully, I'll have at least a couple of more events posted uh, by the end of this weekend or possibly as early as Monday or as late as Monday. But I plan on having quite a few more. So for those of you that are looking for some fun stuff to do, some fun paintings to join in on, make sure you stick around. If you haven't yet, please follow and like both Facebook and YouTube. If you're doing it on YouTube, on Facebook, it's easier to keep track of my calendar and things like that. But anyhow, all right, everybody. Thank you so very much. Happy Easter to all of you. Hopefully everyone had a great time. I know I did, as I typically do with all of you. Uh, but anyway, thank you again. I hope I see you all very soon. Let's see. Danita Atkinson, you got it. My pleasure. Thank you. Heat Her Drew, thank you. The kids had fun. And now we have three new pieces of Easter art for the mantle. Have a great day, everyone. Yep. All right, Pamage. Thank you so much for hanging out. Sophie Hernandez, thank you. Happy Easter to you. Elizabeth Trejo, happy Easter. Thank you for hanging out today. Let's see, somebody's uh, recommending something. Denise Atkinson says, I agree. Using a little water is the most cost effective. You can also use a medium like full cart floating medium. I got at Hobby Lobby, but that's really for more professional artists. It gets too expensive. Water is the best option. There you go. I agree. Uh, as you progress in your painting journey, some of you are going to want to get some of that more expensive stuff because as you start getting more familiar with the medium and, and with painting in general, uh, there are lots of really fun options. Uh, this is kind of the, the main supplies you use for painting, but there's so much out there. Everything from different types of brushes for different types of special, specific uh, kind of uh, uh, techniques and finishes and things like that. There's varnishes for keeping your paint painting protected and uh, shiny and things like that. So anyway, as you're progressing, you will get into some of those for those of you that are interested in that. And I do plan on posting about that stuff as we go on throughout the year. So do stick around for that. Okay. Everyone, thank you again. Have an awesome, awesome day. And I will see you all very soon. Happy Easter, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.